Uh, hello and welcome. Today we talk about Hellblade. Welcome and thanks and for joining episode 23. Well, there you go. And we're going to talk about some gaming news. And we're going to talk about how handsome Gino is. Let's start the show. Always. <laughs> hello, welcome to GG Rated. We hope you enjoy the show. Now here are the hosts. Hello, this is January 21st, 2024. Welcome everybody to GG Rated, where we go over gaming, tech, movies, and news. Mostly lately, it's been gaming. Um, me and Gino hopped on, for the first time in a long time, played some multiplayer and co-op games together last night. Right, We're going to talk a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're going to talk about some news. What are you eating? Um, All I hear is talk. Sorry. <laughs> <What are we? laughs> I'm sorry. So, this we're, is a public we're service recording announcement. This at 12 o'clock yeah, at lunchtime. Things, <laughs> so. <laughs> these things are called Gin Gins. Ah. They are ginger chews. They're very delicious. Okay. It's a ginger candy. Oh, I but cannot anyways. do the ginger. I cannot do the ginger, man. Mm, it's like what? spicy. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. I would, I'll say this. It's been a little bit since... Um, we did not have a recording last week. Uh, we decided to take a little break. Um, you know, we've been recording 22 straight weeks, right, uh, with a podcast because this is episode 23. So we took a week off, decided to kind of hang with the families a little bit, kind of catch up. We had a lot of work going on and stuff. So we're back. We actually got some co-op playing going on. Uh, we're here to discuss mm-hmm. some gaming news of the week, of uh, some game, uh, mm-hmm. the gaming not gaming news of the week, but also gaming moment of the week. And Josh mm-hmm. got to play some Hellblade. So for the first Dude, time, I, I told him about VR. it. played in VR. No, I had so not done I that. Played it in, I played it in regular flat screen mode last night. And then today, I played it in VR mode. <laughs> um, and oh. dude, it's uh, going to be pretty cool to talk about both experiences. And it's going to be fun to talk about how this game is on sale and you can grab it. Yeah. Um, the sale ends in three days, so, so actually it's going to be two by the time this comes out. So we're gonna ju- we're gonna um, jump into that uh, most definitely. Mm-hmm. But right off the dot, I say we go ahead and jump into the gaming moment of the week. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Gaming moment of the week. Great, we're gonna have to go with you, man, with that uh, for the gaming moment of the week. Go ahead and knock it, knock it out of the park first. Uh, let you yeah, go first. Yeah, so this time. I was, I was thinking about this because there's a few games I've been playing. I've been playing The Messenger, which is a, it's a side scroll and platformer. That's really fun. You're playing as a ninja, um, and I also played some games with you, and that was really fun too. We we really didn't get to play together on Gotham Knights how I wanted, that would have probably been my game moment of the week. So I would say it really happened this morning with Hell, Hellblade, and I'm going to talk more about it, but um, it's really cool because the perspective that you're playing at, you're still in the third-person perspective watching her, but she'll like turn and like look at you in certain parts, and it's it's really cool how it kind of plays The graphics are ridiculous, into, man, on that game. Yeah, and they and they even look really great in VR. Like, dude, she gets right up in your face, and you can see all the details in her face, and it it's really wild. Um, yeah. Because I guess you're playing as she's got like a split personality. She might yeah. be schizophrenic or something, and I guess you're one of the voices that's in the background too. Like that's who you're. So it really feels like I'm actually there kind of spying over her shoulder and when you look around she'll walk in that direction so it it's really wild it's not like any other vr game i've played really um because this one is from the third person perspective so it's really cool and i'm excited to see how it's going to play into the game so i think that was a so the moment specifically the game and moment of the week Would probably be at the beginning of the game where she is walking across this bridge and you're really high off of the ground and she kind of like 
not stumbles, but she kind of jerks every now yeah. and then, like she's trying to get her balance. And I literally went <gasps> like because <laughs> it feels <laughs> like I was about to fall off. Um, you know, you know, one like, thing I want to point out when you when you talk about that, I don't know if you noticed this, but you know, they did a lot of. I think they tout her as like bipolar schizophrenic, right? Yeah, and yeah. they do a lot of care and a lot of touching on the audio on this game. Oh yeah, and they do a really good job with the audio to kind of if you I don't know if you played it with you said VR, so it's even more immersive than even I experienced. I'm sure. Oh, yeah, but if you do so, the headset, the actual headset, mm-hmm. dude, it's just it's out of this world the sound you hear um, while you're yeah, going through. That's this what's world. that's what's crazy about the Oculus Quest Two headset is it's got audio that pumps out through it, and it's actually really really good. Um, like it's not all the way up against your ears, but it's still right yeah. there as if you're hearing the sound in person. It's really good audio quality, so I can hear all the little little voices and little whispers and stuff. Yeah. Um, I I'm just excited to go through it and experience it in VR. I had started playing it, like I said, regular, and that was already a really cool experience. But yeah. it's just on a whole nother level in vr and i didn't even know it was going to come with the vr version and <laughs> i got the whole thing for three dollars which is crazy. i didn't know but they had a vr version but anyways definitely I guys either. if you haven't played hellblade play it hellblade 2 is coming out here uh coming up here soon uh on xbox um so it, it's it's always a great game it's usually around eight hours or so um people complain about it being short but honestly i'm okay with it you know um yep man I'll go into my gaming moment of the week. Obviously, uh, I did a stream earlier uh, on our channel, and it's It Takes Two is the game. It's like one of the Game of the Year nominees and stuff. It's um, so good. Such a good game. Yeah, so Gray's played I, it. He's told I, I me about it. I believe it actually won. Actually, oh, it like actually won year. Game of the Year. Okay, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I can see why, because instantly it draws you into it, but um, Gray told me about it, and I was like, man, that'd be a good game for my daughter that's 13. In me to play so we both got on the stream and we started playing it and it's just it's what's so crazy about it is my daughter's got better and better um playing the games like i don't even have to tell her she was telling me what to do on some of the, some of the spots so she was uh-huh. doing she was doing actually really well um and we went through like the first kind of boss that we fight a vacuum cleaner <laughs> that's mad that um uh-huh. see all these things uh-huh. come to life and i don't know much yeah. more about the game I won't go into it, but the best moment was is uh, with sitting there and the the dad and mom's talking. They give them this sad speech about they're talking about getting a divorce, right? And when they're talking about getting a divorce, the little girl is sad and all that stuff. Well, my daughter's over here on the side and she says, "Man, they're old. He looks old looking." I was like, "What do you mean they look old?" <laughs> you know? And it's like they got oh, gray no. hair. I was like, "I didn't see no gray hair. What are you talking about?" So it, it was just funny. She makes co- different kind of comments about the game and she's looking yeah. at different things than what I'm looking at. You know, like I'm like, oh man, that's so sad. And she's like, he's like, she's thinking the whole time, man, he's old, you know? <laughs> so, but we had a blast. We both worked together on the game, which I absolutely loved um, actually being um, her teammate on the game and getting through it. And hopefully we're going to get through the whole game because uh, you, you, you beat it, right? If I, I remember, did. you me and Raven and Shepard actually oh, played Shep. together. No, it was oh. me and me and me and Shep. And dude, it's a very long game. Actually, what? there's a lot of content there. There's a lot of different levels. I mean, it took us a good bit to beat it. And I know you don't like puzzles, but there's a lot of puzzles. Oh too. no! But it's oh. definitely more like more interactive. There are a few of them where, like, it legit. I was like, how in the world am I going to get past this? But we did. It's fun. It's very, very worth it. It's um, whoever came up with it has a lot of imagination. Like it is really a special game. So yeah. I'm glad that y'all are enjoying it together. Yeah, we we definitely are. So I, I, that's a that's a big plus on the recommendation scale. I'll say thank you, thank you, G Ray. Um, yeah, man. With that being said, let's get mm. into the gaming news. All right, check it out. There's one thing I wanted to mention first. I just found this website before we got on. It's called gg.deals. 
gg.deals so gg rated shows, deals <laughs> yeah kind of <laughs> sort of it sh- it shows so this website has no affiliation with us at all but it just happens to fit our <laughs> i like how you had to name. say that Make yeah sure. <laughs> so um it shows all the deals going on right now and in particularly steam it shows hold hold on i gotta turn this down behind me my son <laughs> has just cranked up <laughs> He leaves smi- He's smiling like, oh yeah, I'm getting on I this know. show. He, One way or another, I'm getting cr- on it. <laughs> he cranked up Minecraft back here. Oh. Like a little stinker bug. Anyways, um, so gg.deals, it shows the number one game, the hot deal is Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice for $2.99. It's the historical low. It's 90% off. Oh. So that is the top top hot deal. The next hottest deal is Evil West, which I have not played that. Choo Choo Charles is another one. What is that? Black Tail <laughs> Ultimate Goose Game is only nine ninety nine. I don't know. That's a there good game. A few I play that. Game. I have no idea. But if you scroll down here, like it shows all the great and hot deals that are going on right now, um, and it shows the historical lows. Like it's just it, this is going to be a website I think I'm going to come back to often instead of having to like look all through Steam trying to find out what's on sale. I can just go to this website and say, "Oh crap, that's a great deal." Because I love it when these games are like ninety percent off. It's yeah. an easy buy. Oh, absolutely. So I thought that was really cool. So that's a bit of news there, and um, also. The other bit of news, or actually, I'm going to let you go with your news first, and we can come back to this other bit, Okay. unless you don't have anything. No, I, I just wanted to talk about one thing. I don't know if you saw the the news um, in reference to Ubisoft. Uh, Ubisoft actually came out and, was, and made a comment and was talking about the future of games, obviously, and their comment was that they're no longer going to be making physical discs for their games. And, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. And they talked about that, you know, people need to get comfortable. If I, and now I'm paraphrasing here, people need to get comfortable sure. with not owning their games. And then that is when subscriptions are going to really take off. And I just, it, it kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way because if you put all the power in the company's hands, right, you already see it happening on a lot of these games. They get delisted, right? So right. I just feel like, I feel like it's going to it's going to be a situation where they if they want to get rid of a game uh, and then bring it back up for seventy dollars again just to buy and you can be constantly rebuying the same game the same game the same game. Now yeah. we kind of experienced that already with Nintendo when they go to a new console. Most of the time you have to they do a remaster or whatever for the next console and you rebuy it over and over and over again, right? Yeah. But yeah. the, the 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 big catch to that was is hey if you had the physical media on the old game you you can still play that game and not have to buy this seventy dollar new game with the same thing on this new console right if you right. get rid of this physical media that's no more so to me I feel like they're saying like hey if you want to power it it's okay you know because they're getting yeah. rid of every other source to be able to do it and really if they're going to a model that is software only and don't have to pay that extra overhead to make games and to ship them all out and everything, the price of games should come down. But it's went nothing but up. It has. You know, like, the price of games should go down. It shouldn't be, what is it for, like, a AAA game is, like, $69 or something? Yeah, $70 minimum now, so $60. which Which is kind of crazy. And it's even crazier, too. I was watching a YouTube channel, um... Uh, what's his name? Retro Rick, maybe. Mm-hmm. And he was going to different places because he buys a lot of physical media. And he was going to places like Target and all. And like most of the games aren't even there. Like they're just not selling. So I think physical media for now might die. But I'm I I believe just like he does, it's gonna make a comeback to where um I don't know. It's just like. You look at ebooks, you look at things like that. There are people who still desire that. And um, I don't think it's ever going to completely go away, but you yeah. might see a resurgence of a lot of developers doing this until, you know, people start speaking with their wallets and being yeah. like, hey, you know. Yeah. But 
who knows uh, there's a next generation of gamers out too that might not even give a crap so well i mean i think that's that's the issue is more and more people is starting to not really worry about the physical because yes it is convenient to just sit here and turn on your console and click on a game and play it right the only problem yeah. is is how far does it go where are we going to do all subscriptions and you don't never own a game is, is that yeah. where is, is that okay i mean because me honestly mm. the only the only console i collect on the only console i buy physical on is my nintendo switch right because yeah. it's portable there's a lot of games that you're not gonna be able to get plus i know the history of nintendo the next console comes yeah. out they'll do super mario uh odyssey you know that game They'll probably yeah. redo that game, say, hey, this is going to be 4K60, but it's the same game. They add a little features in there, but instead I can have it on my Switch now, and that's it. Like I can play it anytime yeah. I want to, or I can True. emulate it, you know, if I own that game. So, yeah. Uh, it, it's kind of a hard sell. I mean, like, one thing that would stink is if they made all digital stuff only playable online. There are a lot of games like that. Like, you can't even open them until it's online. I encountered that when I was playing, um, not Steep, but the other one, Riders Republic. I believe it's a, I don't know if it's an EA game or if it's a Ubisoft game. But anyways, regardless, um, I like to play a lot of games offline on my Steam Deck whether I be at work on my lunch break or whatever. Yeah. And sometimes I have to get the hotspot out or I have to connect to internet just so that I can open up certain games, which is yeah. crazy to play. Like you don't even need to be online. It's an offline story. And it's like, they make like, you get online. So you like Starfield you can even play it. Yeah. It's crazy. And with physical media, you never had to worry about that. Like, no. You got the game. That's what the game was. Now it's like even if you do get physical media, it still downloads a bunch of crap. I was, I your, was just about to um, say that. The, the only console. downfall to having the physical only, right, and not having mm -hmm. to download anything is uh, public, you know, the these developers and, and company game companies are now getting used to not completing the game all the way before release. Yeah. They know yeah. that they can release these games. And I know we're kind of going off on a little topic here, but I mean, it, it, it kind of goes one in one with physical uh, versions because this is the issue that happens every time a, a physical version comes out. It's not complete. It's not without mm -hmm. a big patch. What they call is a day one patch, you know, and you put it in there and yeah. it should play like it used to play on like PS2, PS3 and all where you, you, you put the CD in. And boom, you should be able to play it, right? But now yeah. you put it in, it downloads 40 gigs or more patch mm -hmm. patches just to make it work. And sometimes it doesn't even work. So if say you ha you're offline, you're all the way in Iraq, I, I don't know, somewhere that doesn't have much capability for internet, and you get this game and plug it into your console, you're not going to be able to play it because of the patches that that's going to have. So even physical media is going downhill in that aspect, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, and there is um something lost there too because it's real there's a coffee shop that me and my boy like to go to and they have um they have like a Genesis and they have some other kind of system that'll play like Super Nintendo games and stuff and they actually have the physical games there for you to like Which lock cool. in and to hit play. Yeah, and it's cool to have that like tactile feel of mm -hmm. actually doing that like he enjoys going in there just to do that and um i don't want that to get lost on the next generation i really hope that that stuff stays alive at least with retro games um and they got some really we'll good games too that they're going to be losing if they do that i mean yeah yeah there's know? games that i think are lost all the time that's why you have places like internet archive dot org mm -hmm. or dot dot com or dot org anyways it's called it's called internet archive and they try to archive all these things that might get lost in the byways you know um because yeah. there are certain medias and stuff that do just get lost you know so yeah um, yeah. yeah it's going to be interesting to see how things pan out we can think and we can try to guess all day but the market's crazy like it's liable to just go one completely direction 
software only or subscription only and force yeah. it upon the the markets which man i tell you i can't do another subscription <laughs> i'm done with the these subscriptions no, man they add up more subscriptions either but yeah it's crazy with that being said man you want to go into the next section and talk a little bit about maybe some gotham knights in hellblade a little bit more what do you think well i got one more bit of news i was going to oh, talk about what and you got to decipher it a bit with you so um so it was a it was a talk they were talking with microsoft about their acquisition of activision blizzard and i think the news outlets are kind of reading into this a bit too much but the headline here is microsoft can now be a good publisher on sony and nintendo and pcs and xbox ceo says so build great games and deliver them to folks across all platforms so it's looking like Microsoft is is talking about what it's going to look like to develop games that go to all these different platforms and not just theirs. So I, like I was But that's been their deal the whole time. That's right, but but I, uh, I looked into see. that. I looked into that and said, apparently you. Xbox well, responded. Yeah, yeah, Xbox responded. Uh -huh. And uh, especially Phil Spencer and they they are saying they are not going third party. Uh, they are staying first party. They straight uh -huh. out said that. But they are doing the fact now that they're still doing the same model that you and me has talked about several times about going PC, going Xbox, and then any other kind of models like the Samsung TV that has Game Pass built into it now, right? So well, the, they, well they're also developing games for yes, PlayStation too. For, for yes, some of the games are go that's going to be a a decision per game is what they said for PlayStation, okay. right? Nintendo, so they are as well because it has such a large platform like Call of Duty. They already stated that part of the deal is they're going to make a Call of Duty for Nintendo. But that's been said since the acquisition okay. of uh, Activision. I think people are taking it when you when you jumble what they said in one sentence. I think it was uh, Nadella, or oh, uh, forget his name, uh, that is over... Microsoft, the CEO of Microsoft, he had it uh -huh. all came from an interview that he said saying that they're looking to publish for all these companies now, which uh -huh. has been their mark the whole time. In other words, he doesn't want to do the exclusivity anymore uh, because there's more money in the game. If you get your game on PlayStation and it sells five million copies, I mean, sure. you, you, you know, you're making your money back on this Activision deal, right? So I think people are taking it like, oh, they're getting out of the first party system, but they also saying that same, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but not the quote that he does, is saying that um, it's it's going to Xbox. Okay. So they're saying to Xbox, and it's also going to these other platforms. Mm -hmm. So I, if you pick in my brain, you're asking me about it, yeah. I absolutely do not think they're going to just throw away and just go software only like a Sega did. You know, I, I don't no, think that's going to happen. Just, I was just thinking, like, what it's going to look like if they're developing for all these different platforms. Is it going to be like, okay, first these things come out on Xbox and PC, and then eventually, maybe a year later, it can trickle down to Sony? Um, like, how are the deals going to change? And he just talked about being a good developer for every platform. Yeah. It's like, okay, so here's my just, this is the main thing I wanted to talk about with this is like, so you look at how great Microsoft has been as far as talking about every other yeah. company. They've really went above and beyond to be nice about, oh, wow, that's awesome that, you know, Sony has this and that. Like, they've tried to be friends. They've tried to be friendly. Um, but you know, this, this is a business and the business is make more money next year than you did last year, you know? Um, yeah. and I'm looking at what is it going to look like if they keep developing for every, every system. And also in the meantime, they keep buying over companies. Uh, they might end up yeah. having a monopoly on all of this stuff. and. Microsoft could own every platform. So you're really thinking like, that the monopoly, so you, you're going on board of the monopoly thing. May, well, maybe. And like I say that because if they start coming out with banging games, 
and <laughs> it's going to be re- released on every system and everybody starts to like more and more what Microsoft is doing. Like, let's just say they start making incredible first party games, which are getting even better than PlayStation, which would be hard because, you know, PlayStation has some bangers. Yeah. Um, but let's just say that starts happening because they have all these different developers that can do this. And so everybody's like, okay, like, why would I buy a PlayStation anymore? when Microsoft like literally has everything and has more ways to play. Um, I know there's diehard PlayStation fans, but yeah. um, I'm just Please, looking you at take like, away, what this might look like in about 10 years or so. I like, think I get what I think I'm like? feeling you. Tell me if I'm, if I'm tracking you here, but PlayStation right now, what they have, can you answer me this? What PlayStation has right now is they have the stories in the, in the um, single player aspect, right? They had the best single player experiences that you can get on platforms. Is that correct or not? What do you think? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have one anymore, so I can't tell you. But, but. I mean, you don't have to have one. I don't either. Do you believe yeah. that like God of War, the Spider-Man, the Horizon Zero Dawn, the, I mean, you can keep naming more and more and more the platform games like Ratchet and Clank. And I mean, you can just name, all kinds of things that are exclusive final fantasy that's mm-hmm. exclusive on PlayStation. Right. And I know final fantasy is well, kind of like getting away from different. that a little bit, but it's different for me because every game that you listed, like they weren't my favorites. So I was like, eh. yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about in general for the public, not with us. And I yeah, think maybe. that's what took the stronghold on the PlayStation 4, obviously just crushed Mm -hmm. Xbox, right? And I think it had to do with what we're talking about now happening with physical media, right? About how they wanted to be online, online, and they got away from the gaming-only aspect to it. I -hmm. feel like um, if you take that and do what you were saying, and Xbox actually starts making these really great games that people are just dying to get to, right? then yeah. you're going to have that concern of they're just going to swallow PlayStation or PlayStation might be the actual one that goes third party. Right. Yeah. Uh, because all this money well, is going seeing to them it more and more with everything that they're releasing on the, you know, over like to steam and things like that. Like there's games. I will say there, there are games on Sony's platform that I'm still like waiting on, which would one would be ghost of Tsushima is one that I've been wanting to play so bad and I'm waiting for it to come to PC, but there's other games that have eventually came to PC and have, have been really great. And I don't think they can deny that more and more people are going PC. So it's going to be yeah. for their best interest to release them sooner than later onto PC. Um, I thought at, it- uh, death stranding is another yeah. one that was like, I couldn't wait for that to come to PC, you know? So, I've thought about making a video about that specifically for people because I'm yeah. I'm a I'm a real life experience here. I was Xbox, you know, yeah. I had a Series X. You was on PC. Yeah. I was talking to you, and you're like, "Hey, look, you can play." I remember conversations with you, and you saying, "Look, yeah, Gino, you can play those games on PC. Let me show you." And you actually had to show me, like, "Hey, this mm-hmm. is a. It, it's not you having to look online and." download stuff like you get on steam you know it's like a it's like a marketplace just like you have on xbox and playstation and that's mm-hmm. the central place that's what everybody uses and believe it or not that's what i thought about making a video of it is what you said is god of war and all that stuff that's on playstation eventually it does come out xbox comes out immediately on pc you know mm-hmm. along with the xbox so you mm-hmm. i have not missed my xbox at all at all because every game that's on Xbox is on PC. Yeah. So yeah. in the release on Steam as well at the same time. So I, I don't feel like you missed. The only thing you miss is if you want to like Final Fantasy seven remake, the second part is coming out in the next couple weeks. Yeah. Right. I yeah. can't. They're not going to release that game. Maybe ever. They still haven't released the first remake. There's just some games they won't release on PC because PlayStation is still holding out the exclusivity which will make me have to buy a PlayStation, right? But yeah. other than that, there's no other reason to say, why not get a PC? 
and and you have right. all the benefits plus more. And that's just my opinion, and I'm a real life experience of that. But yeah, mm-hmm. I think you're right. I think more and more people too. Like I know uh, there are kids who aren't even up to driving age yet, which have <laughs> you know gaming computers. And it's becoming more yeah. and more of a cool thing just to get a PC instead of a console. Um, listen, I was diehard PlayStation most of my life. Like, I had all the PlayStations, you know, I thought they were way better than Xbox because back in the day, you could play on the PlayStation. You didn't have to pay anything. You didn't have to pay a subscription fee. And on Xbox, you always did. Um, that was huge, that was too, by the way. That was huge. Yeah, yeah it was huge. And now everything is more the same you know you you have these uh i tell you what got me to transfer over to xbox it was a game so like usually what i feel like tells people i'm gonna buy this or that is the games and the games Mm -hmm. are becoming more available on everything i switched to xbox because of titanfall like that's why i bought an xbox i actually bought one used just so I could play that game, and I fell in love with the whole platform. So. Let me say this real quick, just just to jump in on that one section you said. I bought sure. a PlayStation uh, 3 and a 4 before the whole console just to play MLB The Show, the baseball game. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, you're yeah. right. But I just yeah. had to throw that in there, so I agree with you on that. No. <laughs> nice, man. So, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting topic, and I'm – I'm very interested to see how it's going to play out because like, as you get older, these things become interesting, like how these companies operate and everything, you know, to some of the younger crowd that might be listening, this might not be interesting to you, but for us folks that are in our thirties and stuff, like it's interesting. <laughs> no, it's it cool is because you're going back to where we came from, what we grew uh, up yeah. with. And we discussed this before, so I won't go into it, but you know, we, we used to just turn it on the system putting in a game cartridge and playing the game. But now you have to really think about where you have to really think about, okay, where are we playing this game? And if I play this game and I buy this game here, can I play it over here? Or say I want to play it on my steam deck at work where do I play it. So now I got me thinking, okay, if I buy it on steam, I can play it on my steam deck. So if I'm at, you know, somewhere like, you know, in the park or something, just chilling out and I want to play my steam deck or something, then I can do that. Yeah. So you have to think about that kind of stuff now. And you used to not have to think about it. You know, it's when you got Mm -hmm. home, you had your console on your little TV and there you go. (laughs) So, but, (laughs) but that's right. With that being said, let's get into the next section and talk a little bit about this uh, game that we tried out Gotham Knights a little bit. Um, Let's do it. What you think? Let's do it. All right, guys, look, today we got a good one. We we was playing a little bit last night, like we talked about. And when we was playing a little bit, we was talking about Gotham Knights. We saw it on Game Pass. We both snatched it up. There's another perk of that. Um, just try it out since we're already paying the subscription. Um, the only thing I, I'm going to throw out there right at the very beginning is the whole point of getting it was going to play a little co-op and play together. But we spent the past, like, hour of trying to get through as much of the story as we could and they still say we have to progress more in the story before we can play together, which I thought was yeah. completely ludicrous. Ludicrous. Yeah, it is a bit crazy. I mean, it's it seems like a cool game. It seems like they're trying to bridge the gap between a story-driven game and also how you can unlock you know, extra equipment, extra outfits, all that stuff. They're trying to make it kind of an online experience too, I think. Um, yeah, I like. I think it's really cool. I think the movement and stuff is a bit dumbed down compared to what it could be. But um, I think they did just enough to keep it keep it interesting. And you know, the fighting and stuff is pretty simple. But man, they do some bad a moves though. Dude, <laughs> yeah, it's some it's awesome moves. And I unlocked an ability. Um, I forget what it's what it's called, but essentially like i'm playing on the keyboard so i i just hit the number one after i build this up after you build up the bar bar for it you hit (laughs) number one 
And then she goes like, ah, and she just starts punching really fast and just beats the ever living crap out of whoever is on the other end of this. <laughs> yeah, you're Batgirl, and that's right? That's only one yeah. ability that I've unlocked. So who knows what else there is that's going to be really cool to try out. So I say we try to give it a chance and get to yeah. it to where we can at least play together and see what Ooh. that experience is like, you know. We would need to um, give it a chance. I will say this. What's kind of got me where I would want to go back to it is the graphics in the story so far is pretty oh, good. Man. man, I mean, yeah. when you when you started that game, I never expected to be watching like a movie at the beginning of that thing. Yeah. And it was like the longest cut scene um, where Batman actually dies uh, in the cut scene. Yeah. And uh, man, I'm telling you, it, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty good. And you think it's over with like Gray was a little ahead of me, guys. And I kept saying, hey, are you done yet? He's like, yeah, I think it's done. And I keep watching. I'm like, there's no way it's done. I was that far behind him. So about 10 yeah. minutes later, I'll be like, hey, man, are you still watching this? Yeah, I'm still watching it. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I, how long is this cutscene going to be? You know, but um, yeah, it, 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 we definitely got to keep trying and maybe try the co-op and see how that goes. But uh, it kind of reminds me of a Spider-Man. If anybody wants a comparison, the fighting style is kind of like the Spider-Man game. Where you where you dodge and then you hit, um, I'm what's it called? Night Walker? Walker? Is that what it is? Uh, Nightwing? Yeah, Nightwing? Night Nightwing? That's him. Nightwing. That's who I am. So, anyways, definitely. If uh, we don't have much, we just played like an hour. But if y'all yeah. get involved with it and you want to try it out, so far, you know, you at least get to watch a very awesome cutscene at the at the beginning. Yeah. So. And it's developed on Unreal Engine 4, and I can't help but think, what would this be like if it was in Unreal Engine 5? Yeah. You know, for it to run this good, like, I turned on I turned on ray tracing, and I turned on, um, what is it called, NVIDIA DLSS? Oh, yeah, where, yeah, yeah, you know, it uses... It upscales. Um, like, AI learning uh, upscale thing, yeah. And um, I'm running in 1440p on high settings and, you know, looks great. And I don't have like a super, super powerful laptop either. I mean, it's a, yeah. got a 2070 Super in it, but man, this game runs like butter. And I've seen other games that look worse, run a lot worse on yeah. my system. So um, yeah. I was very impressed with how beautiful it was, how the lighting was, and how smooth it ran um just like out of the box so yeah yeah i, think I it's agree gonna be cool like i enjoy you might have lost you oh did you lose me oh you bad yeah. yep lost okay. you just for a yeah. second but we're good gotcha yeah i was just gonna say that i enjoyed a lot traversing around the city too um to get up high and to look around at all the fog and the atmospheric effects on everything was really mm -hmm. neat it looks beautiful at night and you also get a motorcycle during the day the motorcycle no, uh, during it, like all the time i guess um, the motorcycle is awesome only played was, at night time so yeah, yeah yeah it was really really cool well gotham's um, only nighttime right <laughs> like yeah, you, just, you, you don't, that way yeah but uh i would say this uh Check out check out Gotham Knights if you haven't. It's worth a shot so far. I'm, we're going to give it a chance. It's definitely something that maybe after you get through it, you can play with your friends as well. So I would definitely recommend trying that game out, man. Um, and it's, it definitely if you're a Batman fan, you know, uh, everybody's kind of grown up watching their superheroes and stuff. Batman's not in it, but you have like Batgirl, Robin, Nightwing, and uh, what's the what's the red guy's name? Uh, I can't want to say drop shot Red Hood. I keep want to say drop Red shot. Hood. I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> I think drop shot would have yeah. been a better name. But anyways, so, let's go yeah, into I've been playing as Batgirl and her voice. Yeah. Who is annoying? Whoever the voice actor is. Yeah, I mean, like it's good sometimes, but then there's other times where it's like, holy crap! Like <laughs> they could kind of dial that in a little bit more. It's funny that um, you said that because I remember we was playing and I can hear her voice right in in my playthrough. And I'm like, man, she sounds kind of annoying. So I tell Josh, I was like, Josh, man, it's like your girl sounds annoying, right? He's like, yeah, I know, man. She's terrible. Like, we, we, you know, she's probably the sweetest girl now. Let me say that. But like her voice, oh, man. Sure oh, great. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And um, yep. 
I could I could say other things about it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah. Move on. All right, let's go into the last section with uh, Hellblade. Man, let yeah, me have Hellblade. it, man. Tell me about the VR Hellblade. That is what I'm concentrating uh, on here because I have not experienced uh, that, and I'm dying to know, is it worth it? Yeah, so I was so excited about talking about it that I kind of talked about some of it earlier when I <laughs> talked about my gaming moment of the week. But essentially, you know, I was expecting to hop inside this experience and you to be controlling or maybe swinging around a sword. I didn't know what they were going to do. But instead, it seems like they took an artistic approach to how they approached VR with Hellblade to where she's interacting with you you know, just like she does on the flat screen version, yes. but you're actually there third person VR, much like it would be if I guess she's like schizophrenic, bipolar, mm -hmm. whatever, maybe has extra people in her head. And it's like, you're that extra person there floating behind her. And, um, you can hear all the other voices and stuff, you know, she'll turn around and talk to you some, and there's also a part at the very beginning where she talks to some man. She's like imagining that she sees him. And I believe they show like the real person in the VR oh. experience. It looks like a real, like a real, real person there. Um, but can you imagine with the VR experience, like you actually experiencing what it's like to be hearing those voices like that for yeah. real? Like the, the immersiveness it's of it? Freaky. Yeah, it's, it's very freaky, but it's also like, I wasn't as scared. I was more just like, whoa, this is really neat, you know? Yeah. Watching the story unfold. Um, yeah, and it's also good because I haven't hopped in VR in quite a while. And mm -hmm. usually when I do, I play a lot of games that you have to stand. You might have to, like, shoot or grab things. Well, it's nice just to be in a game. And the only thing that controls inside of vr that's not a controller is like my head i can look a direction and she'll kind of walk that way some but i'm controlling her mainly with an xbox controller so i get to chill in my chair and play this game and like look or look around and i don't have to stand up and do stuff and that's fun every now and then to do that inside mm -hmm. of vr to where you're not yeah. you know having to move around and stuff um but I was just I was just amazed that I could grab this game for three bucks, like three, <laughs> as you keep saying, three yeah, three bucks, and to get this experience from it already, um, yeah. it's well worth the money, and um, yeah, there's gonna be a lot more moments I believe that uh, happen that I'm gonna probably talk about next week. Yeah, um, I kind of well, want to go into like Hill Hillblade game. Let's see the game engine, what they're using. So yeah. this is also using Unreal Engine 4, the same engine as the game we just talked about. Yeah, um, in the, ne in the next... Night. Yeah, and, and but uh, Hellblade 2 is coming out, actually, and I think they're on Unreal Engine 5. If I, oh, if I, if I remember correctly, I, I mean, I don't know, yeah. but I think it's going to be switched over to... That's what's so crazy is like even in VR, which usually can like push your system a little bit, it looks amazing. And I even have my computer in the lowest mode of like as far as how much power it's going to give to the graphics and everything. Yeah. I got it in the lowest mode just to keep the temperatures down. And it still runs really good in VR. Every Everything is on high. Like... um and it's just smooth as it can be and looks great. So I think everything on the Unreal Engine platform just is so proficient on how it runs. Um, and I'm excited for the next one. So just for a l little bit of backstory, um, I want to kind of go in. Let's see. So the game is set in late 8th eight, century. The game starts with Senua which is played by Melina Jurgens, a picked warrior from Orkney arriving at the border of Helheim in a quest to save the soul of her dead lover, Dylan, from the goddess Hela. So, 
you know, there's a lot of lore here that maybe mm -hmm. intertwines with what's going on. They're really good fighting um, too. That's in that game. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've played I've about three quarters of it. Of so mm -hmm. it's so. cool how how you block and you know you have a light attack yeah. and a heavy attack, and it's really cool to like be there in VR and watch this happening too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's awesome. Well, we so definitely you look actually forward. Beat the game. No, I'm like three quarters of the way, I believe, and I just for okay. some reason I think I stopped or something. I played on the Xbox yeah. Series X. Um, I need to get it again though. Definitely, if it's three dollars, I can probably get it for Steam. And I don't know if the save well, data go or do it on Xbox. You, you know, on PC. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I just like to have is, stuff. So. I like. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. So, um, yeah, so I just want to get my save multiplayer game. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's the only thing with it, but I think I got so many games I'm trying to play right now. It's like <laughs> trying to beat. Like yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm ashamed to say I'm still trying to beat Alan Wake as we talk. <laughs> so, oh yeah, <laughs> but There's a uh, lot to that though. Like I get it, and if you you ever decide to come down and hunt, like you can totally try <laughs> the VR experience here. Well, I'm gonna um, need you to talk to my chief if you don't mind with Mardi Gras coming up and seeing if he had just let me <laughs> off. If you don't mind, I appreciate that. So I'll uh, talk to him. I don't. I don't have anything. To yeah, lose. <laughs> I'll talk to him. I What's like. Up, I dude? like the confidence, man. With that being said, I got to hop off of here. I got the fence guy here to try to do some. Uh, oh, okay, help me out. But uh, it's been a great show. I appreciate everybody coming in. I'm gonna play a little bit of uh, our outro music and kind of go and get out of here, man. What you think? All right, let's do it, bro. All I'm going to say is uh, I appreciate all you guys. Appreciate you stopping in, especially if you're tuning in live right now um, on YouTube or on Twitch every Sunday. Videos drop Monday morning, uh, Monday afternoon. Uh, our podcast will drop Monday morning for sure because I think Gray handles that. But make sure you can catch us, like we said, on YouTube Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Podcasts. What am I leaving out, Gray? And if you want to reach out with any questions, comments, maybe you could share your favorite gaming moment of the week, you can reach out at ggratedchannel at gmail.com. That's ggratedchannel at gmail.com. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, thank you again for stopping in. Hope you enjoyed the show. Check out Gotham Knights if you haven't, and also Hellblade. Uh, I know it's a little older one, but it's a great pickup to do, especially in VR, as Gray said. So, guys, see y'all later. Peace. Peace.